Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing different characteristics of graphs of polynomial functions. So very first, let's take a look at this polynomial function here. So as we talk about the different characteristics, there are five characteristics that we really focus on here. So those characteristics, characteristics, sorry, those ones include things like the type of polynomial, which we talked about in a previous video of how to identify it where it is increasing and decreasing, as well as our turning points, which include labeling whether they are a local maximum or minimum. We talk about our intercepts. Remember, those are both the x and y that we're going to talk about here. And when we talk about both of those, we really want to make sure that we focus on the idea that x-intercepts go by a lot of different names. They also are discussed as being called zeros. They're discussed as being called solutions, factors, things like that. But when we're talking about the intercepts, that's really what we're saying. Any of those other names are just referring to our x-intercepts. So that's what we're going to focus on. The very last thing we're going to talk about is end behavior or what happens after our function goes off our graph. What is it going to do? So we're going to talk about those things. I'm going to show all five of them on this graph, briefly discussing them, and then we'll practice doing it on some other graphs here. So let's talk about the graphs of this polynomial. Let's first discuss what type of polynomial it is. Well, the easiest way to determine that is actually to look at where it increases and decreases. So we can see that we have some increasing and decreasing here. Now remember, increasing and decreasing, imagine there's like a little guy writing his roller coaster on this function. So as our little guy is riding on this function, what happens is if he's going downhill, if our little person is going downhill, then that person is on a decreasing part of our function. If the person is going uphill, then they're on an increasing part of our function. So in this case, you can see that we decrease, increase, decrease, and then increase before our function goes off the graph. And so with that being said, we have that labeled there. Now, based on the number of increases and decreases, we can actually use that to determine how many, what type of polynomial we have here. So in this case, let's take a look at what happens. Well, we go down, up, down, up. Because we have four changes in increasing and decreasing, that means that this oh, is actually going to be a quartic function. Quartic refers to a degree four, meaning that it has four changes to it. Okay, so we've got our type, we've got our increasing and decreasing, now our turning points. So turning points are where it changes from decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. So usually we have at most one less than the degree of our polynomial. In this case where it's a quartic function, that means at most we're going to have three turning points. Now that doesn't guarantee that we actually have three official turning points, but that turning point is where it kind of changes from what it's doing. So if it seems like it's increasing one way and then it switches to another way, things like that. So our turning points in this case are going to be this point, this point, and this point. Now those three turning points can be referred to as local minimums and maximums, as well as some of, sometimes those turning points are the actual minimum or maximum of our function. So our local minimums and maximums depend on where the location is. So if our turning point comes after a decrease, or it seems like it's at the bottom of, like at a bottom valley sort of thing in our function, then that makes it a minimum, like in this case. If it comes after an increase, or it seems like it's at the peak of what it's looking at, we have a little mountain there, then it's a maximum. So again, a minimum follows a decrease, a maximum comes after an increase. So in this case, we've got a minimum, a maximum, and then a minimum. Okay, this minimum right here is actually our over, this bottom one down here is actually our minimum for the whole function. The other two are just local minimums because the local minimums are maximums. Because that local minimum, this other one here, it actually is not as low as that other minimum, but it still is a low point. Similarly, this maximum here, although it is a higher point in the function, it is not the highest point for this function. This, the highest point here, both of our functions end up going on forever in the positive direction, so we don't actually have a real maximum here. Typically, we'll only have a true maximum or a true minimum, not both. Okay, so then our next thing that we're going to discuss here are those intercepts we have both our x and y intercepts so our x intercepts are where they cross that x axis so this is our x axis which means that has our x intercepts so anywhere our function crosses that line is our x intercept so we've got this point this point this point 
and this point. Now, because x-intercepts are also known as solutions, we will talk about later in this chapter something called the fundamental theory theorem of algebra. I'm pretty sure is what it's called. Um, but basically what it says in this theorem is the idea that what happens is when we're looking at the number of different options that we have when we're factoring a polynomial, what we end up realizing is that there's actually a set number of solutions that we can deal with. And that set number of solutions comes from the idea that we only have so many options that can come out of it. So what this means is when we have a quartic function, at most, we have four different x options because our degree is four. There's not going to be more than four options there because we just can't do that. And so that fundamental theorem of algebra says whatever that degree is, we're going to have that many solutions. Now, that's going to be combining both our real and our imaginary solutions, but that still is our number of solutions. So then what we want to do after that is we also need to identify where our y-intercepts is. So let's take a look at our y-intercept. Well, our y-intercept in this case is actually the same place as our x-intercept here. I just circled that, so it's got a big open circle. Our y-intercept and our x-intercept sometimes are the same, but sometimes they're different. And so we really need to make sure that we notice which one is which to ensure that we have the right thing. Okay, so now we've identified our intercepts. The very last thing that we wanna talk about here is our end behavior. Now end behavior is really important because what it's looking at is it's looking at what happens to our function when it goes off our graph. So let's look at what happens when we're looking on the positive side of our function. So when x goes to positive infinity, so as our x values increase, what are the y values going to do? Now, instead of writing y, I'm going to write f of x. But really what we're asking is, as x increases, what does y do? Well, in this case, as x increases, y also increases, right? y is going on forever in the positive direction. This line, if I were to keep drawing it, would go on forever. So this actually goes to positive infinity. We also need to talk about the end behavior of the other side. So as x goes to negative infinity, or as x gets smaller and smaller, or lower and lower, more negative, more negative, what happens to y? Well, as x gets more negative, for the case of this function, our y value is actually going to get more positive. It's going to keep going up. And so we want to decide what happens with it. And typically what we're going to see is with these polynomial functions, it's either going to go to positive infinity or negative infinity. Now, this is not the case with every type of function. For example, an exponential function will typically approach something like zero or one. We have different things that, think that they will approach. But for the sake of our polynomials, typically polynomial expressions and functions will as x increases or decreases, it either goes to positive or negative infinity. So that's kind of how we deal with that end behavior. So what we're going to do is go over two more examples where we just identify these parts, what all five things, so that we know for sure what these different characteristics are. So let's take a look at this first one. So here's our graph, beautiful as can be. We want to know what type of polynomial it is. Well, in this case, we can see that it makes this U shape. It has an increase here and a decrease here. Because it has two things, it's a degree two, which means it is a quadratic function. OK, so it's a quadratic function. We know where it increases and decreases. We can also label this with an I and a D if you would like to. I usually just use those arrows because they help me. Now let's take a look at our turning points. So that's where that minimum or maximum value might be. Because this is a quadratic function and its degree is 2, we know at most there can only be one turning point here. And that turning point happens right here at the top of our quadratic. So it's kind of that U shape. We have that right there. Because it's at the top and it follows an increase, this is going to be a maximum. Now, this is not only a local maximum, but in this case, this is actually the maximum of our function because it's the highest point that our function will reach. OK, so we've taken care of our type, our increase, decrease, our turning points. Now let's take a look at our intercepts. So our x and y intercepts. In this case, we have two x intercepts. One is right here and one is right here. So we've got two x-intercepts there, and then we have our y-intercept. Now you can kind of see in this picture that our y-intercept is probably going to be somewhere down here. Our arrow keeps going. I would guess something like that. Now we don't actually see it in this graph, but we know that it will cross our y-axis at some point. Perfect. Okay, then the very last thing we have to do is talk about our end behavior. So what happens when x becomes more positive? That's what we want to know. 
that's the very first thing. So as x becomes more positive, or as we go this way, our function becomes more negative. Okay, what happens as x becomes more negative? So as we keep getting more and more negative here for our x values, our function also becomes more negative. And that's kind of how we look at those. So let's take a look at one last example here where we compare those two different things. And in this case, we're going to look at this one. It's got a lot of parts, but we're going to move through it quickly. So the type of polynomial that we have here, well, remember, we can figure that out by looking at the increase and decrease. So let's start there. Increase, decrease, increase, decrease, increase. Okay, this has one, two, three, four, five parts. So this is actually going to be a fifth degree polynomial. Now, there are lots of names for different polynomials. If you want to learn them all, you can. But for the sake of this video, past a cortic, which is a degree four, we're just going to call them fifth, sixth, seventh, et cetera, et cetera, for those degrees on polynomials. Now, we've identified the type, increasing and decreasing. Now, let's take a look at our turning points. So we've got lots of turning points here. We've got one, two, three, four turning points. And let's identify if they're maximum or minimum. So this one here is a max. This one is a minimum maximum minimum now notice how they're going to alternate between maximum and minimum they're not you're never going to have a max next to another max that we might have one but it's usually going to be a composite function where we take both like a linear and a quadratic kind of like a piecewise function we will often see them in just straight polynomial functions okay so we have those minimums and maximums fantastic next let's talk about our intercepts so both our x and our y intercepts well our x intercepts here we've got one two three, four, five of them. We can see those x-intercepts that we have there on our y-intercept is going to be this open circle down at the bottom. Okay, our very last thing is our end behavior. So what happens when x becomes more positive? What does our function do? Well, our function, as x becomes positive, becomes positive. What happens to our function when x becomes negative? Well, as our function, or as our x value goes negative, our function in this case also goes negative. So that's how we're gonna identify those different characteristics. Again, the five characteristics that we care about are types of polynomials, where it increases and decreases, the turning points, the intercepts, and the end behavior. And once you understand those things, we really can understand a lot of different things about our graphs because we learn a lot of interesting information based just on these characteristics. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, but that is the characteristics of graphs of polynomial functions.